and welcome to Tune In to Ghost Channel. If this is your first time joining us, Tune In to Ghost Channel is our midweek service which holds online every Wednesday at 6 p.m. And I welcome you specially to this evening's edition. God bless you. God keep you as you join us this evening. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this wonderful evening. Thank you for keeping us. Thank you for preserving us. The psalmist says that the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Spirit of the living God, I ask that you illuminate every act listening to me this evening. I ask, Lord, that 
you strengthen me and give me utterance in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for in Jesus' name we are prayed. Amen. Amen. So last week we began a series on Daniel. And we focused on what do you do when you are under so much pressure to conform. We established that before every blessing, there is a testing. And we established that we are tested with stress before we are trusted with success. In the life of Daniel, we also examined four character qualities that God wants us to build and imbibe. Number one, integrity. Daniel never forgot his source. He was in Babylon, but he's not from Babylon. He said in his heart that you can change my dressing, you can change my name, but you cannot change my heart because the Lord tests the heart. He had integrity. Number two, discipline. The king's food was yummy. The aroma welled up. But Daniel proposed in his heart not to be defiled by that food. He was disciplined. Number three, we talked about courage. For a 15-year-old, he was courageous to negotiate under a monarchy. But Daniel negotiated. He approached the chief official, and when the chief official uh, did not heed his request, he approached his direct supervisor, the person put in charge of them. Number four, humility. Daniel never demanded his right. He was humble enough to appeal to authority. Then we went further to discuss how to make a case to an authority. We said that we need to develop a reputation for responsibility. Men and women in authority usually give their listening ears to people who are responsible. Two, be humble. We approach authority figure with all humility so that we can get what we need and desire. Number three, don't be deceptive and manipulative. And we clearly emphasize that if you are manipulative, at the end of the day, you will be found out. One day you will be found out if you are manipulative. So, be straightforward. Don't be deceptive. Don't be manipulative. We finally emphasize that we should choose the right place, the right time, and the right words. We said that the right place is in private. The right time is when the authority figure we are dealing with is in a good frame of mind and the right words are good words, pleasant words. Amen. So today we'll move on, still on the series on Daniel. This evening we'll lay emphasis on what do you do when you are asked to do the impossible? What do you do when you are asked to do the impossible? What do you do when your client asks you to complete an impossible project when your boss gives you an impossible deadline or an impossible task to complete what do you do what do you do when you have flipped through the best of search engines on the internet and you cannot find answers you've looked through your library and you cannot find answers in all the voluminous books you have there you phoned your friends you've reached out to experts and the answers seem far away what do you do in such situations and the truth is Many times in our lives, we will be faced with impossible situations. But I have good news for you. With God, all things are possible. Amen. So this evening, we'll look at how Daniel faced an impossible situation. Amen. Daniel chapter 2, verse 1 to 13. I'll read from the New Living Translation. Verse 1 says, One night, during the second year of his reign, Nebuchadnezzar had a dream that disturbed him so much that he couldn't sleep. Verse 2. He called in his magicians, enchanters, sorcerers, and astrologers, and he demanded that they tell him what he had dreamed as he stood before the king. Verse 3. He said, I have had a dream that troubles me. Tell me what I dreamed, for I must know what it means. Then the astrologers answered the king in Aramaic. Long live the king. Tell us the dream, and we will tell you what it means. Verse 5. But the king said to the astrologers, I'm serious about this. If you don't tell me what my dream was and what it means, you'll be torn limb from limb, and your houses will be demolished into heaps of rubble. Verse 6. But if you tell me what I dream and what the dream means, I will give you many wonderful gifts and honors. Just tell me the dream and what it means. Verse 7, 
They said again, please, your majesty, tell us the dream, and we'll tell you what it means. Verse 8, the king replied, I can see through your trick. You are trying to stall for time, because you know I'm serious about what I said. Verse 9, if you don't tell me the dream, you'll be condemned. You have conspired to tell me lies in hopes that something will change. But tell me the dream, and then I will know that you can tell me what it means. Now, with this background, we know that the practice in Babylon was that the king will tell them his dream. And when he does that, they will concur up an interpretation for that dream. But this time around, King Nebuchadnezzar said, well, for me to know that you know the interpretation of the dream, then you have to tell me the dream. It is easy for a client to approach you as a consultant and say, well, this is the problem. Can you provide a solution? But it becomes complex. It becomes seemingly impossible when your client approaches you and says, well, I know I have a problem, but I don't know what the problem is. So find the problem and find the solution. It is easy to come up with a solution to a problem you know. But identifying the problem and solving the problem will lead you to a path of greatness. So we go back to our text. We go to verse 10. The astrologers replied to the king, there isn't a man alive who can tell your majesty's dream. And no king, however great and powerful, has ever asked such a thing of any magician, enchanter, or astrologer. King, what are you asking us? No one has ever made this request. This is novel. This is new. Just go ahead. Help our also. Tell us the dream. I will give you the interpretation. The next verse. This is an impossible thing the king requires. No one except the gods, can tell you your dream. And they do not live among people. The king was furious when he heard this. And he sent out others to execute all the wise men of Babylon. He was like, you guys are not useful. What is the usefulness of light if it does not illuminate? What is the usefulness of salt if it does not spice up a meal? So, kill all of them. Exterminate them. They are not useful. Why are they on my payroll if they cannot do my biddings? If they cannot just tell me the dream and give me the interpretation to the dream? Which means that you've been deceiving me all these years with your seeming intelligence. And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. This was a crisis situation. This is no longer a joke. Daniel and his friends were not with the sorcerers and the magicians at that point in time. But they were sent to kill everybody. This was a crisis situation. Now we're going to look at eight things that Daniel did when he was faced with the impossible. Number one, don't panic or be afraid. When we are faced with an impossible situation, we have legitimate reasons to panic or to be afraid. Legitimate reasons. For Daniel and his friends, they were going to lose their lives. It was no joke. This wasn't a democracy where you can go to a court of appeal and appeal the king's decree. This was monarchy. The king has ordered all of you are going to die. So our general default mode when we get to this point is to panic and be afraid. But when we are panicky and we are afraid, we cannot sit down to assess the situation. We cannot think through logically. We cannot settle down to look out for solutions. So the first thing is don't panic or be afraid. Daniel chapter 2, verse 13 to 14. I read from the New Living Translation. It says, And because of the king's decree, men were sent to find and kill Daniel and his friends. When Arioch, the commander of the king's guard, came to kill them, Daniel handled the situation with wisdom and discretion. The commander showed up to kill them. You know, when he shows up at that point in time, I'm sure he must have come with the weapons to kill them. It shows up. But the Bible says, Daniel undoed the situation with wisdom and discretion. To exude wisdom and discretion, you need to be calm. If you are panicky and afraid, you will make a lot of mistakes at that point in time. You will not be able to think through logically. You will not be able to assess the situation and provide solution or engage authority. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 56 verse 3, I will read from the message translation. When I get really afraid, I come to you in trust. Are you afraid tonight? Are you really afraid tonight? 
Are the bills piling up? Are you in debt? Are you healed? Are you facing a seemingly impossible situation? You are not even assured of tomorrow. You don't know what tomorrow looks like. You are afraid. Every knock at the door, you are afraid. As the day counts down, as minutes turn into hours, you are afraid. You don't know what tomorrow looks like. But there's a God who holds tomorrow. And when you are really afraid, like the psalmist says, put your trust totally in God. Put your trust totally in the one who knows tomorrow. Because he lives, you can face tomorrow. When you are really afraid, go before God. I say, Lord, I've run out of options. The minutes are counting. There's this deadline. I don't know who to run to. I don't know who to cry to for help. But I know that you're on the throne. Therefore, I can trust in you. I can lean on you. Amen. Amen. Number two, ask why. Daniel chapter 2 verse 15, the New Living Translation says, he asks Arioch, why has the king issued such a harsh decree? So Arioch told him all that had happened. Emphasis on all that had happened. So ask why. When you ask why and you investigate the fact, you're in a position to know how to present the matter to your father in heaven. Amen. Number three, ask for time to create a solution. Daniel 2, 16, I read from the New Living Translation. It says, Daniel went at once to see the king and requested more time so he could tell the king what the dream meant. The contemporary English version says, Daniel rushed off and said to the king, if you will just give me some time, I will explain your dream. Don't ask for time when it's too late to do so. Scripture says, Daniel rushed off before they killed the first man. He rushed off. Don't procrastinate. Don't ask for more time when they're about taking the project off your hands. Amen. It took some courage for Daniel, a teenager, to approach the king. Do not panic. Approach authority courageously with a humble heart and ask for time. Ask for time to create a solution to the seemingly impossible situation at hand. Number four, enlist prayer support from your friends. Daniel 2.17 I'll read from the contemporary English version. It says, Daniel returned home and told his three friends. 18 says, Then he said, Pray that the God who rules from heaven will be merciful and explain this mystery so that we and the others won't be put to death. My question this evening is, do you have a prayer partner? Do you have a circle of friends that you can call when you're in trouble? When you're in a crisis situation, can you list out three people you can reach out to and say, guys, we need to pray. The Bible says, woe unto him that is alone. Because if he falls, there's no one to pull him up. When we get into impossible terrains in our lives, we need people to join hands with us and pray through. We need people who can say, well, as long as you're in this situation, we're in need together. And we'll pray through together. We cannot stand alone. If God wanted us to stay by ourselves and live alone, he would have given each one of us a planet. Even Jesus Christ had three people who were very close to him. He had Peter, he had James, and he had John. So who are the three people you can reach out to? And it becomes too late to put together that team when you are already in crisis. You put together that team before you get into crisis. A team of brothers, a team of sisters. You can join your hands, you can pray through. So who are the people you can run to, to join your hands in agreement during crisis? I want you to think about that. If all your friends are all about the latest fashion, the latest technology, device in town, news and all, then you need to build a strong circle of friends. Because the news, the gossip will not sustain you when the chips are down. It will not sustain you in a crisis situation. So today I want you to pen down three friends you can reach out to. If you don't have them, start praying about it. Ask the Holy Spirit to direct you. Praise the Lord. Number five. Pray and expect God to give supernatural help. What is supernatural help? Supernatural help means supernatural, beyond natural. It means that you cannot create that help with your own power, with your own influence, with your own connection. It's beyond natural. God wants us to ask for supernatural help. James 1, 5 to 7, the New Living Translation says, If you need wisdom, if you want to know what God wants you to do, Ask him, and he will gladly tell you. He will not resent your asking. But when you ask him, 
Be sure that you really expect him to answer. For a doubtful mind is as unsettled as a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. 7. People like that should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. So when you ask God, expect to receive an answer. How do you expect? You thank God in advance. Thanking God in advance is faith. Thanking God after you receive something is gratitude. Have you ever been in a situation where you agreed with a set of friends or a set of people about a matter and at the end of the prayer meeting, they go out and say, ah, this situation is getting worse. How do you feel at such instances? That's how we do sometimes when we approach God, believing that, okay, it might happen, it might not happen, but God wants us to approach him, approach his throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. The password is to come boldly to that throne with conviction in our heart that we will have the answers to our prayers. Amen. Number six is worship God. Daniel chapter 2, verse 19. That night, the secret was revealed to Daniel in a vision. Then Daniel praised the God of heaven. What is worship? Worship is beyond songs. Worship is focusing on God. That's why a songwriter says, I'll bring you more than a song. For a song in itself is not what you've required. You search much deeper within through the way things appear. You're looking into my heart. Worship is from your heart. Worship is focusing on God. The vehicle can be songs. The vehicle can be deep thoughts. The vehicle can be words of adoration. But worship itself is focusing on God. So when you get into situations of impossibility, worship. Daniel praised God even after the revelation of the answer. So you praise through, and even after you receive an answer, you praise. Number seven, use what God showed you to save others. Daniel 2 verse 24, I read from the Good News Bible. So Daniel went to Arioch, whom the king had commanded to execute the royal advisors. He said to him, don't put them to death. Take me to the king and I will tell him what his dream means. He could have said, well, take me to the king. Let me save myself. All those guys, the sorcerers, the magicians, they are not useful. They are evil people. They serve the Babylonian God. They should be destroyed. God desires that everyone is saved. The son of God became the son of man so that the sons of men can become the sons of God. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever, whether sorcerer, whether magician, whether witch, whether wizard, believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. So use what God showed you to save others. Daniel was after others to ensure that no soul perishes. So he went before Arioch and he said, don't put them to death. Take me to the king and I will tell him what his dream means. 25, I read from the New Living Translation. Then Arioch quickly took Daniel to the king and said, I have found one of the captives from Judah who will tell your majesty the meaning of your dream. 26, the king said to Daniel, also known as Belteshazzar, is this true? Can you tell me what my dream was and what it means? And finally, this is the eighth thing that Daniel did, point people to God. Daniel 2.27, Daniel replied, there are no wise men, enchanters, magicians, or fortune tellers who can tell the king such things. Meaning, I cannot tell you this by my own self. I am not here to brag about my own powers, but there's something beyond me. 28, but there's a God in heaven who reveals secrets, and he has shown King Nebuchadnezzar what will happen in the future. Now I will tell you your dream and the vision you saw as you lay on your bed. 29, while your majesty was sleeping, you dreamed about coming events. The revealer of mysteries has shown you what is going to happen. 30. And it is not because I am wiser than any living person that I know the secret of your dream, but because God wanted you to understand what you were thinking about. Now here, God is not just interested in Daniel. He's also interested in Nebuchadnezzar. He wanted to reach out to Nebuchadnezzar. And Daniel was a vehicle. Daniel did not say, well, I got this inspiration because I have some special powers. I got this inspiration because I am a deep thinker. I have some mystic powers. He gave glory and credit to God, who is the revealer of all secrets. Daniel did not take the credit. That was a major test. And when we refuse to take the credit and point 
back to God, who has given us the wisdom, who has given us the knowledge to execute that task, to go through that impossible situation, then God does what? God promotes us. When we pass this test, God promotes us. So we see Daniel's promotion at Daniel chapter 2, verse 46. Then King Nebuchadnezzar bowed to the ground before Daniel and worshipped him. And he commanded his people to offer sacrifices and burn sweet incense before him. The king said to Daniel, Truly your God is the God of gods, the Lord over kings, a revealer of mysteries, for you have been able to reveal this secret. Then the king appointed Daniel to a high position and gave him many valuable gifts. He made Daniel ruler over the whole province of Babylon, as well as chief over all his wise men. So when God gives you an idea, a solution to that problem or challenge facing your organization, a problem your client is facing, most times your client will ask, your boss will ask, how did you do that? How did you come about that? That is an opportunity to reach out. Because God is not just interested in solving your problems, he's interested in reaching your boss. He's interested in reaching that person in authority. And when you give him the glory, you get the promotion. Amen. So Daniel passed this test. I don't know what you are facing this evening. I don't know that impossible situation before you. I want you to take out some time and just talk to God about it. You are weary. You feel like giving up. You feel like, well, I, I don't know whether I'm going to die in debt. I don't know whether I'm going to come out of all this. I don't know whether I'm going to lose my job because I cannot solve this problem. There's so much crisis right now in the world. I don't know how to function in my sector. I'm overwhelmed, Lord. I'm overwhelmed. Talk to the Lord this evening. Heavenly Father, you know the desires of the heart of everyone listening to me. And you're able to do much more that we can ask, think, or imagine. Lord, I ask that you do much more than they can ask. Do much more than they can think. Do much more that they can imagine in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mighty hand rescue them from their situation, from that, from crisis, whether family crisis, financial crisis, in the mighty name of Jesus. Heal the sick in the mighty name of Jesus. Bring in an assurance of hope to everyone who is heavy laden and giving up right now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, sweet spirit of God, for we have prayed in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much for joining us this evening at Tune In To God's channel. I trust that you have been blessed and the Lord God will walk you through that valley of impossibility because the Lord we serve is able to make water spring forth even in the desert. He's able to move mountains and clear every obstacle before you. Please join us on Sunday for celebration service. Time is 9 a.m. God bless you, God keep you and make his face to shine upon you. See you on Sunday. Amen. Thank you for connecting to Midweek Service. We trust you have been blessed. 